Hi guys, it's us again. Um, today we are going to cook for you something that is our favourite, isn't it Daisy? What's it called? Bang Bang Chicken. And it is basically chicken and breadcrumbs, but with... Homemade chicken. Nuggets, yeah, proper. Basically. And uh, it is really delicious. Um, we're going to do, first of all, Daisy's version, which is mm. got less spices and stuff in it. And then we're going to do my version. Well, that has you know, lots of spice. Not lots, just a little bit. Right, so, uh, back in a second to show you our ingredients. So, right, Daisy's now going to take you through all of the ingredients. What We've have we got, Daisy? We've already prepared us, but you need to chop up two chicken breasts. And you can you show us how they're chopped? Into chop. What sort of size are they? Um, sort of thickness of a big fat finger? Sort of. Yeah, okay. Then what have we got? You have some flour, a whisked up egg with a fork yeah and then some peco breadcrumbs which are these let's have a close-up of the peco breadcrumbs what's the difference to peco breadcrumbs opposed to golden breadcrumbs daisy um they taste a lot better with bang bang chicken yeah meat. and they're golden kind of if we have a close-up of them you can see that they're kind of like shredded bread instead of that golden stuff, which is tiny little bits. Yeah, so into the flour and the paper so breadcrumbs. So we've got a production line set up. You do, here, I'll just show you. Okay. You so cover the it in flour. flour first. What, does, what, what do we call the flour? Um, glue. glue. The flour glue. is the glue. And then you stick it into That's, the egg, yeah. which actually makes the glue. Yeah, so the flour makes the egg stick to the chicken. And, and then, then you put it into this, it's into the breadcrumbs. It's easier if you use one hand to do this stuff and then the other hand to use the bread Okay, and that's to stop the Peco breadcrumbs from sticking to your icky hand, right? Yeah. So you have one hand for the icky stuff one hand for the dry stuff then when you cover a part all in peco breadcrumbs hang it up for everyone to see mm. you put it on a plate and you do the rest of them exactly the same okay so and then you fry them but we'll and show you how to also we what we put something in the flour and the oh, breadcrumbs yeah. we put a bit of salt in it to make it a bit salty yeah slightly tastier right Okay. If um, you have a kid, definitely put a bit of salt in. But if you're an adult, follow the next, how to make the next stuff batch. Yeah. So we're going to make a few of daisies and then we'll be back to show you how we do my flavour. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to now show you what. Who we these honk? Yeah, we're going to show you what goes into the more grown up versions. Is what are those you got there, Daisy? Garlic granules. You only need a little bit, not yeah. too much of waste. It makes it too strong. Yeah. Okay, so that's a quarter of a teaspoon yeah. of garlic and granules. It, it stings a lot. Yeah, and then what have we got here? <coughs> Celery salt. Let me smell it first. <laughs> Ew, stinks. <laughs> Do not ever smell any of these. <laughs> not if you're a fussy little girl. If you like, that's okay. That's, that's too much, just... Okay. That's it, perfect. Chuck it in. Right, Mix. and now probably two, two of, of those these. little spoonfuls of this stuff, please. You you say a little bit. If it's a little bit, why don't we use these smaller? No, just just <laughs> <laughs> don't question my methods. I'm the I'm the chef here. You're my sous chef. <laughs> what does that mean? You're my um. 
help her. <coughs> Those don't breath. they smell delicious. Italian no. Italian mixed herbs, they're great. They smell absolutely horrible. No, you can you can dome that one, it's fine. Just do two big ones of that. Yep, chuck it in. Do you want those? Yeah. Fine, cool. That's it done. Absolutely. And I'll give that lot a little stir up. With a spoon? Well, just fingers or whatever, just or shake can the dish. Can I have dirt. a spoon? Well, you can if you want. You could have just shaken the dish. And Spoons are easier. Okay. You want to mix it all together and make sure all of it is mixed in. Yeah, and then give the dish a little shake to make them all flat. I have never, ever made the grown-up version. Right. Chill out now. You've got to mix. Just give it a little shake to get the thing flat. That's it. Right. And now we go back to the glue. And you do it. Oi! We forgot the pepper. Okay. Put some pepper on there. You need a, tell me when it's enough. Glue. Egg. Twist it the other way. There you go. Cool. That's cool. That's awesome. Right, mm. and then in there. Once you've done that, I'm going to mix it a bit. That one might be a bit spicy. I'm going to shake, and then Daisy's going to pull it out. And look how that looks. Mm. I'm going to compare them so you can see the difference. Okay, so this is one of ours. This is the other. Look how different they look. Yeah. Um, do we need a different plate? Just stick them on the chopping board behind you if you want. Put them on a different plate so they don't get any of the spices onto the other ones. Can you shake the tray that so the things are? Yeah. Okay, <coughs> shake it, Daisy. Why do I have to? Okay, I'm terrible at shaking, but. Well, the more you do it, the better you'll get. There you go. That's it. Awesome. Ooh. Well, a little bit messy, isn't it? Horrible. <laughs> I'm a disaster. Right, we'll be set. back when we finish the rest of the chicken off. Daisy May's Bang Bang Chicken Strips with no spices in and the grown up ones with all the spices in. Now we all we need to do is fry them in a frying pan with a bit of oil and uh, we'll show you how that looks. Okay, so we're ready to start cooking Daisy's little uh, Bang Bang Chickens. I'm going to cook mine later because I'm not hungry yet. But basically, all we've got is, if you look down here, we have a little pan with some oil in it. There's quite a lot in there because you want to basically shallow fry them. And then we've got our little chickenies over here. And we're going to put those in there. And I'm going to show you when to turn them, etc. Right, so what we do, we've got this on a medium heat and we'll grab one of our little chickeny bits and you want to lay it in like that nice and gentle you're not going to get burnt unless you drop the chicken in from a height or something silly like that just lay it in nice and gentle and you get a few of those going in there maybe one little one at this end and then Give them a little bit of a tease with your tongs. And you see them bubbling away there. That's what you want. And you can see it's actually starting to cook. You can see the cooking line around there. Now, don't be tempted to keep turning them or everything. Just give them about a minute, minute and a half before even touching them. And 
and you'll see what it comes out like. Okay, those have had about a minute, minute and a half. You'll see when you turn them over, look at that. Oh, e -E -A, beautiful. Golden. Exactly how you want them to be. Do the same on this side. And then just give them a little press. You'll feel that they've got a bit of spring in them which means that they're still raw in the middle. So give that about 40 seconds for a minute on that side. And then as you start potting them like that, you'll start feeling the spring in them disappear. And that's when you know that they're lovely and cooked inside. Once they're cooked, we're gonna transfer it onto a bit of uh, the old kitchen roll, drain off the excess fat and then place it up. Back in a sec. All right, so now you'll notice the noise of the frying has started to change, and that is because they're starting to let go of a little bit of the liquid that's actually in the chicken meat. That means they're starting to get pretty much cooked. So, time to whip them out onto the kitchen roll, and we're just going to leave them there whilst we cook their friends. That one's a bit thicker, that one will probably take a bit longer to cook, as will this one, but that's cool. They will actually retain their heat for quite a while, so these ones can chill out here. They will actually keep cooking for a little bit. Just give them a little turnover, make sure the grease has gone from both sides. Look at that, isn't that delicious? I like to put lemon juice on them or have them with a bit of sweet chili sauce. But Daisy being Daisy likes them plain. So we're gonna serve them up with just some basmati rice that has been cooked in chicken stock. Uh, she also likes a few seeds on the top, a bit like how Itsu do it. And of course, a meal wouldn't be a meal without cucumber for Daisy Mae. So cucumber, rice and chicken and she's a happy girl, and then I can cook my ones. So here we have Bang Bang Chicken with, mm. with, with chickeny rice, with butter and seeds and cucumber. What do you say, Dave? Thumbs up? Mm. Happy? Mm. Good.